Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up. Today we've got a review for you of SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated, written by a good friend of the channel Dave Morris, although in fact I've been told the vast majority of it was written by his wife Sophie. So in that case, thank you very much Sophie, much appreciated. SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom was initially released in 2003. It may not have received the best reception from critics, but it has built quite a fan base in the years that followed, and is now looked at as a classic licensed game. In the recent resurgence of 3D platformers, including plenty of remakes, it itself has now undergone the remaster treatment, and has been, well, rehydrated. So is this game as appetising as a Krabby Patty, or should it be sent to the chum bucket? Thank you to the publishers for the review code, and now, let's find out. The story starts with Plankton creating robots to wreak havoc in Bikini Bottom on his command. However, on activating the machine, he accidentally sets them to the Don't Obey setting, and they run wild throughout Bikini Bottom and its surrounding areas. Meanwhile, SpongeBob and Patrick are playing with a toy robot and wish that they could play with a real one using Patrick's magic wishing shell. This leads them to believe they caused the mayhem. So it's up to SpongeBob and his friends to battle the robots and take back Bikini Bottom. The game is a 3D platformer collectathon where you navigate nine different worlds in order to find the main collectible, the Golden Spatulas. You start off in the hub world and each of the main levels are accessed from here once you have the number of golden spatulas required. Beating a main boss battle opens up the hub world further so you can access more levels. You also have shiny objects which act as the game's currency, either paying a clam to open new pathways or Mr. Krabs to buy golden spatulas in the main hub world. The other collectible is Patrick's socks. Find 10 of these and he will give you a golden spatula. It is a bit strange that Patrick is a playable character helping you find the spatulas, yet he seems to already have a load of them on his person, but I guess it's in keeping with their characters to not notice something like that. As mentioned, Patrick is a playable character, as is Spongebob and Sandy Cheeks, and all three of them have different movesets. You primarily play as Spongebob, who has the richest moveset, being mainly bubble related and also using his bubble wand to attack. He learns a few more bubble related moves as the game progresses. When you encounter a bus stop, you can switch to either Sandy or Patrick, depending on the level. Patrick's unique moves revolve around picking items up and throwing them, and Sandy has a lasso to attack with, as well as being used to hover in the air. Her platforming sections, I found, were the most fun. The levels themselves are mostly linear in their design, with 8 golden spatulas to find. These can either be found along the way or by completing a task set by a non-playable character. Sometimes you activate the task by walking up to them and pressing R to talk to them, but more times than most, a cutscene would activate out of nowhere before you'd even seen that the NPC was there. There are quite a lot of puzzle type tasks to complete within the game, which can be fun at times, however a few of them do have some quite annoying tendencies. There are a wealth of checkpoints along the way, so dying doesn't tend to send you back too far, and there are also warp boxes scattered about to make backtracking easier. It is a shame that there is no map to bring up, as I did find myself disoriented when trying to navigate my way around. Sometimes after an in-game cutscene, the camera would be facing the wrong way, and I would end up going backwards without realising. One thing that does improve travelling is the fact that you can bring up the menu, which tells you which tasks you have been set or have completed in each world. Selecting it will warp you straight to that location, which is a nice touch. I found the controls took a while to get used to. Pressing A to jump and Y to do your basic attack felt odd, since I would usually prefer to have these buttons nearer to each other. The B button is used to do your character's special move, which includes a ground pound, and again, I felt this would have been better suited on one of the shoulder buttons. I did eventually get the hang of it, but it is a shame that there is no way to customise the controls, as I didn't find them particularly comfortable. There were also times where the jumping was unresponsive, which made some of the platforming sections extremely annoying. The camera is handled with the right stick, and manoeuvring it works as you would expect, although I found it wasn't always helpful. It was too easy to position itself behind a piece of scenery, and as I mentioned earlier, would face the wrong way at times as well. It's also a shame you can't freely switch between characters at any time. There were plenty of times I came across an area to find I was playing as the wrong character to progress and had to backtrack to find a bus stop, which would be fine, except it would sometimes take me a while to locate one. Obviously this is less of a problem the more you play as the levels become more familiar to you, but it is just another example of how a basic map would have been a nice quality of life improvement in this remaster. The combat mostly comes down to running at the enemies, avoiding their attacks, and using one of the character's moves. Sometimes there will be a robot generating machine that will infinitely spawn more robots, so you'll need to destroy them first. 
Some things such as these cause damage if you are close to them when they explode, so you'll just need to move quickly. This is sometimes made harder by your character getting stuck to the machine and unable to move. Sadly, glitches like this happen to me quite often. It's a shame these happen so frequently and the game doesn't feel as polished as it should. I know that this has sounded quite negative so far, so I do just want to reiterate that I did enjoy my time with the game. The worlds were fun to explore and you had that convenient checklist to help you keep track of what you needed to do and what needed collecting. And I must admit, I did find it quite compelling trying to find more of the spatulas, with my love of collector fonds making sure I didn't put this game down too early. But even with that said, there are issues within the game, as I've said, and gameplay scores 13 out of 20. Controls were decent within the sandbox sections, but were not responsive enough for the precise platforming, plus that camera could be a bit of a pain, and they score 12 out of 20. Visually, the game takes on the style of the show. It's vibrant, even in the darker worlds, and the background's aesthetic is very appropriate for the show using that mottled, painted look. Being a remake of a 2003 game, people who have played the original will appreciate its rehydrated upgrade in all its high definition glory. The subtle bubble effects do sometimes make you feel as if you are in an underwater world, which helps with the immersive experience. The levels are varied in their look, and they do stand out from each other, making them memorable. SpongeBob's dream being one of the highlights. The character models translate very well into 3D, and for the most part, they are well animated. There are plenty of fun animations in the gameplay, the idle animations are funny, and one of Spongebob's death animations, which has him dropping to the deck and flopping about like a fish, is particularly humorous. During the in-game cutscenes, the characters are very expressive. Also during cutscenes and loading new areas, there were ongoing rendering issues, where the environments would take a second to fully render, which was quite distracting. There is plenty of fan service with references to the show, one being portraits in the background. The humour of the show is something that really shines through. Speaking of humour, the game's writing really is a highlight. It's filled with funny dialogue, and I found myself laughing just as much as I would watching one of the TV episodes. Most of the voice cast are here, but sadly Clancy Brown doesn't voice Mr. Krabs and Mermaid Man, and although his replacement, John White, does an okay job, it is noticeable. The narrator, voiced by Tom Kenny, introduces the levels which again makes you feel like you're watching an episode. The sound effects are cartoony and appropriate. Another thing to mention is that the level of sound between cutscenes and gameplay was quite different, with cutscenes being much quieter, so you may find yourself turning it up for one and then having to quickly turn it down for the next. Visuals feel like they present the show well, but sadly some animation glitches and slow rendering do let it down, but overall the game looks nice and you feel as if you are part of the show, and they score 15 out of 20. The music was in keeping with the music from the show, and each soundtrack suited the level well, and audio scores 18 out of 20. Battle for Bikini Bottom costs £24.99, €29.99 Euros or, $29.99, or $47.95, Australian dollars With 100 golden spatulas to find, plus 80 of Patrick's socks, there is certainly plenty to do. There is also a multiplayer mode featuring a boss cut from the original game, and it can be played locally or online and acts as a very basic horde mode, which to be honest we didn't find particularly engaging, but it is here new for this particular iteration. Although at a cheaper price point than some new games, it's not as polished as it should be for a game that has this price point. I feel that when you look at things like the Crash and Spyro remake trilogies, which are only priced at £10 more than this game, it kind of puts the price of this game into some context. Personally, I would have loved for them to have included a remaster of Revenge of the Flying Dutchman as well as part of the package, maybe that's just me being greedy though. Nonetheless, value scores 13 out of 20. To conclude, SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated is a fun but flawed game. Fans of 3D platformers, especially collector fonts, will find a lot to enjoy here, as will fans of SpongeBob in general. However, the problems this game has can be off-putting, especially in the game's more difficult sections later on, where unresponsive controls and precise platforming really don't mix very well, especially when you throw in an awkward camera. You'll definitely get some laughs out of this and enjoy seeing the world, but I can't help but feel that a game so fondly remembered by so many people should have been given a bit more care and attention when being remastered so many years later. If nautical nonsense is something you wish for, this game will happily provide it for you as long as you can accept it, warts and all. SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated gets a switch up score of 71%.
A huge thank you to Dave and Sophie for writing this one, especially you Sophie, you've done a great job, thank you very much. Please do check out their channel, Save Dex Gaming, there will be a link in the top hint comment below. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support, and to each and every one of you for watching our videos, take care, stay safe, and until next time, happy gaming. Love opening presents.